Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for coming and for braving the weather. You see, whenever the Royal Meteorological Society has events, we always put some weather on for you. So, I <laughs> hope you enjoyed that. We'll run an event like uh, the Question Time style, so you'll be able to ask a few questions yourselves direct from the audience. And we have some, some of you have kindly already put some questions together, some really interesting ones which we have here as well, which will start to kick us off. Will global warming actually lead to global cooling and a new ice age because of the shutting down of the uh, conveyor belt in the North Atlantic? Is that, is that me? Peter? <laughs> um, okay, so the short answer is probably not. Um, Almost certainly not a global cooling, actually. So what what the what what we're talking about here is the is the circulation in the North Atlantic that brings uh, salty water north in the Atlantic. Um, salty water is more dense than fresher water. As it goes north, it cools, which makes it more dense, and then then that sinks down at, at high uh, high latitudes in the North Atlantic. Um, and as you may have seen in the film, I guess it's the film Day After Tomorrow, isn't it, where they made a whole movie about the possibility that, the, um, that this could all shut off and, and plunge New York, uh, Manhattan and other, and other places around the world into a, um, this global cooling that's been referred to here. And, I mean, this is a, this is a real possibility if it, if it were the case that a, a lot of, uh, for example, a lot of fresh water were put into the North Atlantic, as indeed probably it did happen in the past when, at the end of the last ice age, when a very large, the Laurentide ice sheet melted and put a very large amount of fresh water into the North Atlantic in a very short period of time, and that did cause an abrupt and large climate change in the Northern Hemisphere that's, that you can see in the ice cores. Um, and indeed, in the climate models um, that we run at the Hadley Centre, for example, um, that if you put a lot of uh, fresh water into the climate model, it will indeed shut off the thermohaline circulation, this, this circulation that brings um, the, the, the circulation that we're talking about. However, um, the, the, the climate simulations don't indicate that it is at all likely that, uh, that it would completely shut off uh, as we, uh, under climate change, as we warm up the water and potentially also bring more fresher water into the North Atlantic as a result of changes in rainfall patterns. Um, it does indicate that the the thermohaline circulation is likely to slow down, um, and this could cause some, therefore, some relative cooling in the margins of the Atlantic relative to what it would have been if, if, if it had been going at full, full throttle. Um, but nevertheless, the overall effects of, of global warming in, for example, the UK, the UK for example, would, would be a, a much greater than, than that effect. So, um, no, there won't be a global cooling, probably, uh, you know, we still need to do some more science, to be honest, to understand all the ins and outs of what controls this, this circulation. So, I wouldn't say the question is entirely closed, but it looks, it looks very unlikely that that circulation would shut off. Climate predictions are telling us that we have uh, hotter and drier summers, but that actually the, when the rain comes, it will come in much more serious and much more intense rain events, and so uh, there's a risk of, of those flooding events and what in, in wetter spells. So how do we communicate that? Um, have the models so far got it wrong and are we missing some variability that's not represented in the models? So Claire, I apologise if I paraphrased your question a bit. Brian, do you want to have a go at that? I'm beginning to wish I answered the first one actually. <laughs> um, I think one of the difficulties we, we do have is actually putting together climate change and climate variability and actually getting the message over as it says here. Uh, if you're looking at the whole planet and averaging over the whole planet, then the, the overall climate change tends to come through in the record, whereas if you're looking very locally, like the UK, then it's the variability that dominates what we see. And so it, it, it does make it very difficult, and often what you'll hear is the simplified headline, it will be <coughs> 70 degrees hotter and it'll be drier, as if that is going to be every year, and it just isn't like that. In fact, one of the very important aspects of climate change could well be a change in the variability, and that's a sort of subtlety, if you like. Um, but um, and it certainly looks like the last few years, in fact, is that we've had a 
a, a great deal of variability between one year and another. I think you could say the patterns have actually been very stable, settled. So the summer has taken on a, a characteristic and it's maintained that characteristic. But the models are, have trouble actually describing this variability in its, in its true sense. And we're always, I mean, I think those who use models are always the most critical of models and thinking, are they missing something? And it's those who don't use models who tend to have absolute faith in them. So models are definitely skeptics. They're always asking questions, have we missed something? Is there something not in the models? And it may be that the variability is not quite as much in the models as in the real world. And that's a question that I think we, we should always be posing to ourselves. But it is difficult if we had a decade which was actually cooler than the last. It wouldn't mean global warming had gone away. It would just mean that the natural variability of the system on all scales is masking it at that moment. And actually, once the, the pendulum comes back, then the warming might come on at a, a greater rate. So it is, it's a very difficult message. It doesn't actually go in with our sort of daily tabloid headline. It doesn't go in with the political cycles that one could actually get this rich ver mixture of variation and change. And the one year being cooler does not mean it's gone away. Thanks, Brian.